All right, aloha students, Mr. Fisher here. I just wanna show you how to use some of the historical data tools on Yahoo Finance for our analysis. We're going to be trying to predict the future risk of a price change in a stock. We're gonna use this year's information though, and we're gonna sort of pretend like that's the future. So when you do your research, we're gonna use data from 2016, 17, 18, 19, and 2020, not 2021. 2021, is the numbers you're trying to predict and that way we'll be able to see how close did you come based on what actually happened in real life so I'm here on Yahoo I'm looking at Ford Motor Company and you can see the stock price and all that good stuff here on the summary and this is sort of where we're going the beta score so the Ford beta score is 1.17 today a beta score close to one or exactly one that means that that stock goes right with the market that it's in so for example if the New York Stock Exchange uh, as a whole market is up today, there's a very strong correlation that Ford will be up. It's going to go right with the market, up and down with the market. If it had a beta score like 2, that would mean that it changes a lot, that there's a high risk that this stock is going to change prices. So this beta score tells me um, Ford doesn't change prices very much. It's very stable. Let me show you how to get some data here, and I'll show you where to put it. Across the top, I'm going to click on Historical Data. And then they have a tool that will help us get the data we need. So for time period, the opening start date here, I'll click on it. And then I'll click this little option for start date. It takes me into the calendar. And then one more little drop down there will get you into this. And... Just scroll up, find 2016. Oh, we don't need to go that far. 2016, January, and I'll select January 1st, 2016. So that looks pretty good. And then I could change the end date. I'm just going to ignore 2021, so I don't really have to change it. I'll hit Done. And this looks okay. I don't know why it went to the 2015, but we'll take it. And historical prices, but we don't want daily. We want monthly. Because actually, we only are going to use quarterly information. So every year, we can divide into four quarters. I'll hit Apply. And it applied the filter. So I'll scroll all the way down to the bottom here to get my first number for January 1st, 2016. I like to use this column that I'm clicking on. That's the actual price. This is also a price, but it's adjusted for things like the dividend and a bunch of other things. It might be a more accurate representation of the price, but this is the actual price. So I'm just going to go with this. So January 1st, 2016, $11.94. You'll have your own spreadsheet. Oh, sorry, I don't want January. I want to go out to January, February, March, April 1st. Um, and I'll show you why in a second. So April 1st, the price was $13.56. So you can see I've already put it in right here. So April 1st, 2016, $13.56. Why April 1st? That's the best number um, if you look at my little picture on the right here. If I'm trying to see, well, wh how, where did we end up at the end of the first quarter? So January, February, March, April 1st is like the first day of the second quarter. So the price on April 1st is a good spot to sort of represent where we were at, at the end of the first quarter. All right, so then second quarter, April, May, June. So July 1st will give me a good price for the end of the second quarter. So you can see I've already got it, and I'll show you where I got it right here. April, May, June, July. Where are you, July I think we have a mistake here. Where's July? So, so I'm not really sure what happened. Um, oh, here it is, right in front of my face. July 1st, 2016. So $22.66. So you're just taking that, put it into your spreadsheet, and you see I already did it. One more time to get the third quarter. Um, I actually went to the first day of the fourth quarter, October 1st. Right? And so I went back in. October 1st, it was $11.74. You see, I have it there. Now, to get the 
fourth quarter price, October, November, December, I want January 1st of the next year. So January 1st, 2017. I'll go in. All right, there it is, $12.36. That's going to go here. I need to do that for five years in order to get enough data points so when we go do the analysis, um, our margin of error will be pretty low. If we do this, we'll be able to find the standard deviation. We'll be able to find the variant, which is really helpful to help us see if we can predict the beta score correctly. And reminder, the beta score is always given on a stock quote. And that beta score is an indication of how much risk there is of the stock changing prices. Let me put in Tesla really quick. Tesla does not follow the market. The price of Tesla stock um, tends to change a lot. Now it happens to go up, but that doesn't matter. So I'll just show you before I leave. Here's Tesla this morning. The beta score is almost two. So that means that the price of Tesla doesn't tell me if it's going up or down with the beta, just that it's really far away from one. So two tells me when the NASDAQ changes prices, Tesla does not necessarily follow it. Um, and if I show you Tesla for five years, you'll see that the price has gone up a lot. So most of the market has not gone up this much. So there's a lot of volatility. Happens to be a good thing for Tesla because the price is so high. Um, so that's a lot for today. Hope that's helpful.